Okay, um, hello everybody, I'm Jörg. Um, this is my Twitter handle, if you want to follow me. Um, what I'm doing, I'm working as a technical lead at a digital agency, KRDS, a uh, pretty awesome shop. Um, and one of my responsibilities is handling SSL certificates. Uh, we work with a lot of clients, a lot of custom domains, usually one of the requirements is SSL these days, and so we have to order SSL certificates for these guys. It's quite a lot, um, so usually when that comes up, my face starts looking like this, because getting an SSL certificate the traditional way is a pretty much pain in the ass exercise. You have to generate your RSA key, you have to generate a CSR certificate signing request. Um, you have to log into some certificate authorities' terrible web interface. Like I don't know, we're using Global Sign that looks a bit like the '90s are calling. Um, you have to fill out there like really, really weird forms. Uh, pay a lot of money. Usually, it's like uh, 30, 30 euros, 40 euros. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong. For wildcards, it gets even more, it's, it's really like talking about hundreds, partially. Um, then if you happen to work for a company like mine where your CTO is in another country, you have to wait for that guy to wake up, uh, give you the OTPs for that Visa card transaction you just did, uh, because yeah, that guy is in France, it's a French card. Um, you have to verify that domain, that's the worst part. Try to verify the certificate for a wildcard domain, that's a really pain in the ass, because you actually, they ask you to put a file on some domain, it's just that domain isn't the one that has an A record, so you have to kind of come up with something. Um, so last time I tried that, it took me like an afternoon just to figure out a way to verify the domain. Um, yeah, once you have that done, yeah, you finally get that email, your certificate has been issued. Uh, so you have to upload, upload that and yeah, in the worst case you have to manually set up the chain, the certificate chain. Um, so all in all, it's, it's a really, really time-consuming process. So it takes an hour at least, uh, an hour of working time. And that's every year, right? So these certificates usually, uh, they need to be renewed. So I have like every month at least two or three renewals coming up. Uh, so yeah, um, that sucks. I'm not the only one to recognize that. So um, somebody came up with this. Um, it's called Let's Encrypt. Their website, Let's Encrypt Org. Um, they are basically a free, automated, and open certificate authority. Um, yeah, um, comes from not just anybody, it's from Mozilla. Uh, Akamai, Cisco put themselves together, um, Facebook, Chrome, Arm Board. If you check their website, they have a really impressive number of logos uh, of big internet names that are behind them and backing that. So this is really something that is definitely gonna be big. Um, the organization behind that calls themselves ISRG, um, Internet Security Research Group. It's a California-based nonprofit, so it's a really registered nonprofit organization. Uh, and their mission is to basically reduce the technological and financial barriers. That's what I'm just talking about um, towards secure internet communication. Or in other ways, just let, let's encrypt all the things um, without any hassle. Uh, yeah, that's pretty awesome. So what does it do? How does it work? Um, it still does all that stuff. It still does the keys and the CSRs and the domain verifications and getting that certificate. Uh, the only <coughs> difference is it's automated. That's the first difference. That's what makes us happy. And it's free. That's what makes your boss happy. Um, so yeah, let's try a quick demo. And since I have no other domains I can safely use, I'm going to use my own, uh, which Luckily, it doesn't have anything on it. Um, I'm going to use, oh, you don't see that. Uh, I have to go out of full screen and give you my terminal. Um, yeah, this one. So what I'm going to use is basically my own, that's, um, where are you? Hello? I think it just... Do 
terminated the session, so I'm going to use another one. Okay. Uh, so I'm going to use an EC2 instance, which I just created for this particular purpose. So uh, don't try to do anything nasty because it's going to disappear very soon. Um, so what I'm going to do here, um, the first thing you have to do is you have to get there client software, uh, which apparently, okay, let's just, yeah, yeah, um, which apparently there, there are supposed to be binaries for this client, but they're not available for every OS. So, so far what you have to do is, um, Pseudo SU. Um, where am I? Okay, don't do that at home. Don't do it as root usually. I'm just doing it for presentation. Um, what you have to do is you have to clone the GitHub repo, which contains the client. Um, this is, okay, I'm going to talk about the client stuff later. It's essentially, the whole thing is an open thing. Uh, that's an open protocol. So this is essentially just a reference implementation. Technically, everybody could build a client, and people did build other clients. Um, so, but for now, let's just do the absolute manual way. Um, yeah, uh, the whole thing is written in Python. That means usually you have to install a lot of shit uh, to get it running, um, to make that life also a bit easier. They created something called Let's Encrypt Auto, which essentially just make sure that you get all the dependencies and all the Python, Python stuff. Um, where is it? Yeah. Now it goes ahead. Um, installs all that stuff uh, on your system. I guess you can just, if, you, if you're suspicious, you can guess, just check the script and make sure it doesn't do anything nasty. I uh, hope this is going to this isn't going to take forever. Okay, let's see if I have that. I think... No, it's not. Shit. Okay. Even though I think it should be... Local... Bear, local... Yeah, here it is. Okay, it's not there. Okay, I have to do it, sorry. Uh, okay, so let's go. Oh, uh, ah, yeah, okay, <laughs> that's nasty. Um, apparently Amazon Linux isn't very well supported, but um, um, Yet, I did it on Ubuntu, it worked fine, it didn't have that warning. Um, but it basically just says it, please enable, this, please set up the debug flag, and it works. So I, I tried it in my experiment, it worked very well, there was no problem. Um, but there's this warning, so I guess you shouldn't use it in production on Amazon Linux yet. But who's using Amazon Linux? Just deploy Ubuntu and you're fine. Uh, I'm not exactly sure why it takes so long. Thanks, Microsoft, for the fast Wi-Fi. It's, on it's actually it's running on the yeah. Actually, it should be it should be fast. It was a lot faster this morning. It's very fast. Question. Back. Um, so this uh, this let's encrypt. You say is a consortium of a couple of uh, different companies. Yeah. Um, I thought I saw Mozilla there. So does that mean? Um, Firefox browser would automatically recognize these. Um, uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna talk about that in a minute okay. about browser support, client support. That's obviously something I asked myself. That's why I'm having this talk. I want to share that what okay. I found out. Um, did you use sudo? I did use sudo. I'm root. No, you ran it. Oh, you 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 
Okay, let's just, it might just be working. Let's just give it a try. Uh, what it does is essentially it installs, so what Let's Encrypt Auto does, it just lets, installs Let's Encrypt itself into this directory, into your, actually in your home directory, dot local. Um, so you can just root dot local share. I guess you can also install it somewhere else. I guess there should be some binary package for Ubuntu <coughs> and major distros at some point. Um, bin. And according to their website, there are, just not for this. Uh, let's just try to call the help. Yeah, it doesn't. That's Murphy's Law at its best. It did work perfectly, and it's the same box. I don't get it. Uh, <coughs> I guess that's why they say it's not supported on Amazon Linux. Uh, let me just go back. Apparently, you shouldn't be rude while you're installing it. Uh, but, OK. Um, so what we want to do, I have on this machine, I have Nginx running. Um, so let's just get, is it running? Yeah, it's running. So. Okay, uh, why? Uh, that's the problem with HTTPS redirects right now. I'm, I can't open the page because it forces. Maybe it works if I just go into incognito mode. Yeah, okay, so this is just Nginx with its default start page running. Uh, you see there's no SSL here. Uh, so it's super, super unsecure and all that awesome stuff I'm going to do on that website isn't going to be s encrypted for our users. So now I want to change that. So the way I go about is to just um, right, I have to stuff. No, 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 it's, it's, it's okay. I'm just thinking. Uh, here we go. Yeah, yeah, it's still loading. Um, so what we do is let's encrypt. Auto. This whole thing is, is designed to be basically plugin based. So they have a plugin for Apache. It essentially takes care of everything. It configures your web server, installs the certificate, restarts the web server, et cetera, et cetera. Um, I think the one for Nginx, I haven't checked if it exists. Uh, I want to show it to you manually. Um, so basically, that plugin or command, they call that third only. So that's what, essentially, that will just download the certificate, and I can just do whatever I want with that. Um, what it needs to do, though, is to have to verify the domain automatically. So if you ever ordered SSL certificate, that usually goes, there are usually two ways to do that set up some DNS record, or you put some file or some header into some file on your server and then try to, that CA will basically try to get that file and check if that information is correct. Um, what you ultimately need to do is you need to prove that you are the one who controls the server you want to get that certificate for. Uh, so what 
this one needs to do is it needs to be, I think it was webroot, um, check there was. Does anybody agree that the window management on OS X is just bad? Okay, I think it's called web root. Um, so what we essentially we just go how oh, I think I have to use now I have to be root because it can't run that on I cannot write into this directory. So Uh, now I'm giving it the folder. Uh, <coughs> user share and genx html. This is where I want to, this is the root directory for my web server. This is where the content is. Um, I have to give him the domain. Uh, in this case, it's my domain. And dot me, and I can actually have multiple domains in one certificate. Uh, it doesn't do wildcards, but it does multiple domains, and that's usually something you want to do if you want to have both uh, the regular one and the www one. I hope this is uh, Python, Python, Python. Actually, yeah, don't use Let's Encrypt Auto. Actually, just use that binary it installs into your local root, then it doesn't do all this weird dependency management stuff. Uh, okay, let's try that the other way. to user.local share let's encrypt bin so this is the actual binary uh, uh, that's going to be a lot easier so now that's where we can get our SSL certificate it's first thing it does um, it's going to ask us for an email address for yeah if you ever want to drop me a message use this email address You don't have to enter it, actually. You can do it without email address. Uh, it's still going to give you a certificate. It's just in terms of any kind of recovery stuff, you can't do it. Um, what it does, it, it does create an account on DCI's server. So that account is basically per domain or per server base. Um, it doesn't really have any personalized information with it, uh, which is a good thing. It's also a bad thing in some way. Um, I have some terms of service which I'm not going to read as usual. And uh, what happened? Okay, that didn't have me. Probably, uh, yeah, maybe the domain is just not mapped. Let's just try to get rid of this. I think there is no A record for www. <laughs> Still again? No, 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 here you go. Uh, congratulations, your certificate has been saved. Ed. So now it tells you where these certificates are. Uh, we can have a look at that. Uh, so let's just go ls etc let's encrypt live data. And then you have, okay, you have your certificate. This is the full chain certificate. Normally, it's not only your actual certificate, you also need to add some intermediate CAs uh, for that to be resolved properly and my private key. Uh, so, yeah, okay, this is, this is the stuff you actually. So now, okay, 
except for all this slightly confusing stuff uh, I had. But normally you just really need to do this, the last command. Uh, and within a minute or so you get your certificate. So that's the part that normally takes an hour to do and requires Visa card payments. Uh, okay, let's just quickly set up etc engine x engine x dot conf so what's the way how do we set up a server <coughs> listen I could use some help learning Vim if anybody's interested um, so what else do we have to do we have to Okay, uh, I did prepare this just for. <coughs> okay, put in your SSL certificates. Okay, that should do. Nginx. Just test the config. Does everything work? Everything works. Dot Nginx. Oh, Nginx is so much easier to work with than Apache. But there is. Uh, no, it's the different. Dash S reload. Signal reload. Okay, that should be it. Here we go. Here we go. This is what's uh, Yeah, that's. Actually, Chrome already knows this. Let's encrypt authority. I'm going to talk about the authorities in a minute. Um, what you can do, does everybody know how to verify SSL certificates? There is this. Pretty cool website, SSL Labs, which basically runs a bunch of tests against any SSL certificate domain and checks if the certificate checks out, uh, if the ciphers check out, if the certificate chain, that's the most important part, the certificate chain must be in intact in one piece. Um, so, yeah, that's, that's going to take a while, but I can guess it's going to be an A. It's going to be a great SSL. So it's actually really something that works. It's not just like something a bit better than a self-signed certificate. That thing is actually accepted as a proper certificate. Um, yeah, unfortunately, this takes a while. So maybe we can check it out later. I'm going to continue with the presentation. Let's just go on here. So this was the demo. Um, I guess I'll leave it up to everybody. So far, this domain is still available on HTTP, right? It doesn't do any forced redirect, but that's a trivial exercise to do for everybody. Um, so how does it, this actually, how does all that magic actually work? Um, it's described on their website. Um, there's also a pretty detailed document, which is under IETF uh, stewardship, uh, that exactly describes that protocol. This is funnily called ACME protocol, if anybody knows what ACME means in relation to that coyote, then you had a pretty awesome childhood. Um, yeah, it, it bas basically specifies that process, how that works. So how does your client and that CA server interact and what kind of challenge does the CA server give to the client? Like, how does that file look like? Uh, that kind of stuff is just described there. So that basically means everybody can write a client and also everybody can write a CA, which is even more important. Uh, it's, it's not this particular organization controlling everything. You can just basically roll your own CA. Um, so it's, it's all clean and open and nice. Um, there's, if, if you don't want to read that long document, which is, I, I didn't read it, uh, it looks pretty boring. Uh, you can check out this one. It's less technical. Uh, it's still technical, but it's less, uh, it's easier to digest. Um, your server is identified by some private key which is generated on the client, so it's not sent to them. 
uh, every communication, the actual certificate request is signed with that key pair, so it's actually verified that way. Um, yeah, and then again, the CA basically issues these challenges. That kind of stuff you have to do manually. Uh, so far, you do that automatically. The ever DNS record, which is usually not working because you don't have access to the DNS, but that file on the server. You can also revoke, re revoke certificates that way. Um, you can also renew. That's probably the most, also, actually that's the second most, maybe it's in the most important aspect to it. Renewals work automatically as well. Um, because these certificates are usually valid for a year. Um, so what you have to do is, at some point, You have to issue let's encrypt dot ruin the space renew. Um, since this is still kind of unsupported, you have to give the debug, debug flag and you have to do a dry run. Um, okay, that gives a couple of. Uh, what's wrong here? No, no, that's that's actually ah yeah. You have to accept that register of email is just a warning, uh, but you have to accept the TOS, which you do via this flag. I think I have some. Agree? Was it agree? Okay. Uh, so it's agree. TOS. So now it's talking to challenge stuff and things. Uh, so now everything has renewed. So it basically, Let's Encrypt it has this etc Let's Encrypt directory, right? This is where it stores all the stuff and it knows exactly what domains are managed on that server. So you just have to do that thing once and it's going to renew everything. Um, so their recommendation is to set that up as a cron job, like daily or weekly or monthly or something. Um, I'm not sure if you get an email. I never got, I, I haven't, I've just tried, started using it. Um, so I have no certificates that are expiring. But let's see if there's something coming at some point next year. Um, yeah. Okay, that's so much for how it works. Um, some pitfalls, something I ran into. Um, it actually puts that file on your server and it puts it in directory, which is what I thought. Uh, Basically, it tries to get this file, dot well known. Um, now, some smart people put that rule into the Nginx, which is a pretty good idea to not serve dot files. Uh, it denies access to dot files. So, if you have that rule in place in your Nginx config, that's not going to work. Uh, so, you have to take it out at least temporarily. Uh, but, yeah, you have to, well, actually, at least you have to build some exception for this particular path. Uh, because for the renewal, you also need that stuff. So it needs to stay in place. Um, obviously, also that user you're using needs to have access, right access to the web server root directory. I'm giving a really bad example by using the root user um, for simplicity, but usually you want to have something more sophisticated uh, as a setup. Um, what about these certificates themselves? That's the question that came. Um, they are issued by a CA, which calls itself ISRG root. X1. Um, they have some intermediaries. Um, that one is the actual one. Everything is signed with this one. Um, this one is kind of a disaster recovery CA. Um, obviously, since this whole thing is pretty new, most browsers don't have that installed yet. Usually, you have some kind of trust store. Um, Windows has it. Linux has it. Uh, where all the known CAs are, root CAs are. So since this isn't widely known yet, uh, they use something like this certificate CA by Eden, Eden Trust, which is essentially about online payment stuff. So they're not really a CA that sells certificate. They sell other stuff and they cross sign these certificates. So they kind of get widely known because this DST root CA X3 is really widely supported by most browsers, clients. Um, uh, something else, these two things, I haven't had the time to really check them out, but apparently you can actually search your certificate here and the status, so you could actually check if it's been revoked for some reason or if it's, yeah, some 
times stuff gets issued to hackers and then they revoke the certificate uh, so you can check it if you really want to be safe. Um, in terms of clients, there is some post on their community site uh, what is supported and what isn't. Um, so essentially everything Android since 2.3, so something, Firefox since version 2, uh, Windows, the later versions, I think Internet Explorer, Chrome, they basically use the trust store of Windows. They don't use their own trust stores. Um, Safari since version 4, iOS since version 3, um, Debian, Ubuntu. I also checked out CentOS myself. It seems to work. Um, it doesn't work with Java. What a surprise. Um, they applied for some kind of Oracle root CA process. Uh, so things are working slowly in Java land, apparently. So it's going to. I think if you do that on your server, you can still manually s import that root CA. Uh, so for enterprise applications, there's always a way to solve that. But it doesn't come out of the box. Uh, even though Android is a different story, Android does support it. Um, older Android versions, anything less than 2.3.5, if anybody's still using that. Windows XP, if anybody's still using that, uh, out of luck. Uh, but if you use Windows XP, then security is obviously not your my primary concern. Uh, BlackBerry, apparently also not. Um, I did some quick tests with Node.js and PHP. I think they're both using the underlying operating system. So it's essentially the platform. Um, yeah. That's something that is to keep in mind. There are some rate limits. Um, this is not something like free tier and premium tier. This is really just stuff that they use since the whole thing is still kind of maturing and the infrastructure isn't in place. So uh, you can only do five certificates per domain per week, uh, which is totally OK, because normally you need one certificate per domain per year. Uh, it's just if you test and play around with stuff, you should probably use this test cert flag and staging flag uh, to make sure that you don't hit their production servers. Uh, these rate limits are not on the staging server, they're just on the production systems. There are others, uh, yeah, registrations per IP, 500 per three hours, so this is, I don't know which kind of company would ever hit that limit. Uh, it's very unlikely. Um, there's no limit on the total number of certificates anybody can have, you can just have as many as you want. Um, okay. Um, there are pretty nice integrations. Um, there is Apache has something. I haven't tried it yet because I'm not using Apache anymore these days. Um, Caddy Server. Caddy Server is pretty pretty awesome. If you never heard of it, um, it's new. It's written in Go. Uh, it's a. I can just show you the website because we're getting pretty late. I don't want to give you another demo. Um, Um, it's basically, it's, it's one binary, you download that thing, uh, put something called a caddy file into a directory and say caddy and then it fires up the web server and serves your website. There's no, it's, it's the fastest way to get a running web server. It's, it's really awesome. Check it out. Um, and what it also can do, it fully manages the SSL process. So you start it up if your website is not localhost. If you run it locally, it doesn't work. Uh, but if it has a server name, if it's running on port 80, if it's not explicitly restricted to port 80. Uh, so a couple of things you have to keep in mind. Uh, but if all these conditions match, it's going to get this SSL certificate as it boots. So the server comes up, gets the certificate, and then you have an SSL certificate running on your website within one minute. It's, it's just really cool stuff. Um, I mean, let's just, OK, I just I got to show you. Um, Let's just stop Nginx because it's going to block the port. Uh, I think it's just stop. Are we still there? Okay, it's no, it's oh shit. Okay, I guess it's okay. Let's just have status. Okay, Nginx is dot is that. Um, fine. Why did I put that? Uh, 
Okay I, okay, I can't show you, sorry. Um, it's going to take too long. But yeah, check it. Um, it's really, really cool. Um, there's also some express middleware, apparently, that handles that as well. Um, so you don't even have to handle this, this uh, Nginx stuff. Why should I use it? Um, apparently, obviously, it's less work once you figured it out. Um, it's free, so your boss is also going to be really ha happy. Uh, it's encrypted, so everything is safe. Uh, it's automated. Um, so DevOps people will also be happy because they can integrate that into their deployment management processes. Um, it has some limitations though. One thing is really important, it's only domain validated. So obviously since that is automated, nobody's gonna verify the identity of the guy who ordered that certificate. It's only really just saying that guy owns the server. Uh, so you can still do your PayPal service evilhackers.net stuff and get a valid SSL certificate for that and your users will think, yeah, awesome, this is safe because it's green, but it's not. Uh, it's just some hacker that got that certificate. But then again, you can also do that already as a hacker. Nothing's going to stop you from doing it. Uh, let's encrypt yes or no. So, yeah. Um, last thing. Any questions for that so far? Let's just stick with that. So you are saying in just domain, it means it's, there's no encryption? No, no, no. I mean, it's encrypted. But normally, if you, if you have an SSL certificate, it does a lot of things, right? Um, like this one is going to tell me that first the connection is encrypted, but it also tells me who's encrypted it, uh, who's owning the server. So it's essentially just saying this is Google. Um, while on my certificate, uh, it's just saying some. It's just saying something like domain validated, and that's it. So so. The ownership of the certificate, that's the point here. Encryption is still, in, sorry? It can be compromised? No, 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 the encryption is fine. It's just somebody else. It's, it's if you open your browser and you see PayPal in the address bar, and usually on, on banking sites, for instance, if I go like, let's just use a local bank, let's just use my own bank. Um, uh, I hope that's encrypted at some point. Yeah, here, it says DBS Bank. So it's verified that this site is owned by that company, which is DBS. So somebody actually had to manually verify that the certificate is actually issued to this bank. And now if I go to Let's Encrypt, they can't do that. They're just going to verify that I control the domain and all the traffic between the website and the server is encrypted. And it goes to the right server. But it doesn't it's tell you that like it's... Sorry? It's basically like getting, uh, right now, getting the cheapest certificate for like a fiber. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's, that's. Which basically shows yeah. the green uh, key it uh, block and that's it. Yeah. Essentially gives you an encryption key, private, public key pair and stuff, so you can do the encryption and it verifies that that certificate is owned by the server uh, and nothing else. This is the lowest level of privacy you can get. And this is perfectly okay for most cases. It's just if you do online banking or e-commerce, you might want to go a step further because then you want to tell your users that you're actually PayPal or DBS or whoever you want to be. Um, so and in, terms of, in terms of pure technical encryption safety, it's as safe as any other encryption level. So it's, it's obviously compromisable at some point, but it's as safe as it can get. Uh, just the trust between the user and you isn't the highest level you can get. So this, this is one important limitation. Um, to know about this stuff. Um, and this is why Global Sign and how they call it, they're not going to go out of business anytime soon because they still have to do this. They're not working with Windows XP in any of the browser? Firefox, probably. Firefox has its own. I never tried. Uh, Internet Explorer, most likely not. It's also the next problem is that Windows XP doesn't support all the cipher suits. So, so even the encryption level required for modern secure communication isn't supported by Windows XP anymore. So pre-SP3, don't, don't even try to encrypt because it's just useless. Uh, with SP3, it gets a bit better, but still, just just don't use XP. That's the lesson. But I think 
necessarily just between the browser and the server? Why operating system is playing a role? Because of the certificate chain, you basically you get a certificate, that certificate is backed by another certificate and by another certificate. And yeah. Ultimately, you have some root authority that finally get, says, some big well-known player that says, okay, this certificate was issued to this guy and I did that, so I verify it. And these root certificates need to be installed on your machine, yeah. on the client. And some clients just don't have these root certificates. You can manually install them. Always, you can also, if you use Linux, and you can just note, note the correct folder. I don't know exactly which one it is, but they're all there. Uh, ETC, SSL, whatever. And so if the root certificate is not in that folder, the certificate will not be accepted. And so it's this, this list I just gave you is basically the default setup. You can always modify that. Even though, again, XP is just on operating system level, it doesn't support the necessary level of encryption. So even if you have the root certificate on an XP, it's still not going to give you secure communication. But for everything else, I think it should be just installable. Okay. And then most I have, why is it the, not the, the browser usually use the existing CAs installed in the operating system, so they don't use their own list of certificates or CAs. They just use whatever is available on the host system. Even though I think for Firefox it might be different, I'm not sure. I think Firefox has its own list. So Firefox could be working independently of, of OS. There's no new version of Firefox going out for Windows XP anyways. So. Yeah, why would they? Yeah. OK, last thing. Um, if you're looking for a job and happen to be in Chennai, or if you know anybody in Chennai, we're hiring. Um, if you know these guys, um, commit strip. That guy is my boss, pretty cool guy. Um, so if you're looking for a job or know anybody looking for a job, we're looking for PHP, uh, JavaScript, full stack, front end, all that kind of stuff. Um, and please come to Force Asia. It's in two weeks, uh, three days full of talks, open technology, uh, web technology, hardware, Internet of Things. Uh, a lot of people, big people, um, big open source guys, com contributors. Um, head over to the website. We have a discount code, We Love PHP. You get 20% discount uh, for the ticket. Okay, that's it. Thanks, and sorry for the long talk. <laughs>